Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Keurig with Frontrunners Innovate. And with me today is Paul Webb. And Paul is an energy expert. And hot topic lately, particularly for me, is hot topic all over the world all the time. But right now, for some reason, I'm getting lots of conversations with people who have concerns around uh, energy. And it's, it's just too important for us to not dig into every now and again on a, in a deep way. And what a perfect person to do that with today. So Paul is, like I said, an energy expert. He is the CEO of B2B Energy Limited and uh, also is the author of Becoming an Energy Expert as a podcast called Energy Speaks Back. And wow, I love that title. <laughs> well, I want to hear more about that. So Paul, what I always like to start with is the person's background. So give us a little bit of uh, in, you know, entryway into who you are now, who you've become. So what happened in the past to make you an energy expert? Well, I, I don't think we've got enough time for that today, but <laughs> I'll try my best. So Mary, thank you very much for inviting yeah. me today. It's a great privilege to be talking to, to you today. Um, so thank you. <clears throat> yeah, so Believe it or not, I don't look this old, but I've been in this industry now for 40 years um, from leaving school. Um, and my first employment was working at a nuclear power station. And very quickly, I started, to, um, incidentally, my father said to me, go and get a job in energy, son. It's going to be the future. And he said that to me over 40 years ago. So, you know, <laughs> it's it has really reminded me, you know, of how important this industry actually is to me. So when I was um, sort of very young working at the power station, I was sometimes driving through protesters because we, it's a nuclear power station. We often were sort of like the sort of um, being attacked by the CND, ban the bomb and all this type of people. And I, so one evening I drove through protesters of youngsters my age, laying in the middle of the road, trying to stop us from going to work. And I started to realize, you know, energy is so precious. Why are we generating energy in this way? And it's very quickly I started to evolve. In, um, I used to hear the, the power station screaming at night regarding the energy it was producing. I used to think, hold on a minute. Why are we producing energy at this time of night? You know, people should be tucked up in bed. Obviously, there's industry. But then I realized that there's a better way of actually the side of energy, we should be stopping using energy. And I used to, you know, my dad used to say to me, why you got your lights on when you're not in your room and, you know, yeah. all those sort of things. And why your windows open and the heating's on. <laughs> and it's all those sort you of stories. for that when I was a kid. <laughs> yes, yes. So it was that side, I started to realize that precious, how precious energy actually was. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I started, my, my career started to change. So I worked then for the Met Police and as a, an energy officer. So we used to go around all the police stations in London and reducing their energy. But at that time, the, the way to reduce energy was building management and control in, the, in its early, in the early sort of years. Um, and then from there, I went from working with Trend for 10 years, who are now Honeywell, and then Satchwell, who are now Schneider. So I've had a, I've had a blessed career regarding energy management and it has been the best career ever really because I've got to see some amazing properties um, that I've done energy management on and I've helped people save energy, not just turning the lights off, which is just actually is part of what we do, but sort of more involved strategies regarding that. So that's my background really and, and how I've got a good understanding of, of energy management. Wow, your dad was a smart person <laughs> to push you in the right direction. He knew you would have a gift in this area, all right? Yes. So when uh, I would assume that you're the CEO of B2B, but I imagine you and maybe some partners uh, formed that. Tell us the genesis of that, if you will. So um, again, I was working for, sort of when I was working for Schneider as such, mm -hmm. my um, career, I, I was responsible for, you know, in them days, I was managing a very big PL and I, I got the experience of running a big business. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to personally, I was going to use the word fed up, but I was fed up of actually pushing everyone up. I, I had talent in what I was doing regarding the energy management and I wanted to get out for myself to make an impact and a dent. Wow. I had these great ideas of how I was going to build a business and a network. I love networking, I love people, I love working with people. Um, I'm a BNI director, so that is a really big part of what I do. 
Yeah. And that's network with people. Hence, you know, that's how we've reached out ourselves to get to know each other now. So I, I had this vision of creating a energy network back in 2005 when I set my business up. Mm -hmm. I had various different changes. So I went, I, I worked with other companies. I, I partnered with people, but I really had a great passion for wanting to train people. I love training people and showing people how they can make the savings. That's my passion. Mm -hmm. And that's really why I wrote that book, um, How to Become an Energy Expert. So I wanted, I wanted people to feel my passion in it and actually see what a great industry this is, because it is. I think it's the best industry to be in. Fantastic. Uh, well, this is a great segue. Would you mind showing us the book? <laughs> Which one? All right, well, show us both. Okay, so this, this is Becoming is, uh, an Energy this, Expert. This is Becoming an Energy Expert. And that was right. published when? Uh, November last year. Last year. Okay, to, uh, 2021, yeah. as we're sitting here, in case somebody sees it yes. two years from and now. I wrote this. So I've never written a book before. I, as I said before, we haven't got enough time on the podcast to tell you my sort of background regarding my writing and things like that, because I'm not a writer. <laughs> I've become a writer. So I wrote this uh, last, uh, back end of last year, finished in November. And in this one, I wrote an article every week during 2020. Okay. And I just felt that I had to publish it because it was just sort of like a... A journey for 2020 there's things in here that are linked to the pandemic and, and what was happening to help businesses regarding saving energy so and I thought, two weeks of energy from a management perspective correct yes yeah. for an organization for an energy expert what was going on in my life and what was what was the challenges that were coming up within my sort of career as such well you know you're you're global Okay, so when you look at this subject matter, you're looking from a global perspective. So in your books, the writings and the what you're, the information you're bringing forward, is that something that could be applicable anywhere? That is a very interesting question because um, in 2020, when we went into lockdown, yeah. I, obviously I, I was sitting in his chair many, many days, um, talking to people via LinkedIn, um, and the first person I spoke to was a guy called Hector Garcia in Mexico. Mm. And we had this Zoom call. I can remember it vividly. That So we had this Zoom call and it, it was amazing because we were both speaking English. And I apologize to everyone in the world that we use the mother tongue of English, but we were both speaking English. Mm -hmm. He was, was speaking broken English. But what I then dis discovered then is that we all speak different languages but we all speak the same language of saving kilowatt hours, reducing emissions and saving our planet. And that has become a, my sort of quote, my catchphrase throughout what I do. And it very quickly I realized, so I went from Mexico to America to, yeah. and I just was talking all over the world on Zoom and everyone I spoke to all had the same passion and the same challenges. Fantastic. So uh, I, I had written that down and I'm so glad that you brought it up, reducing emissions and saving the planet. Such a simple statement and, and really tells you what, what it is that you do. And, you know, honestly, from the standpoint of pulling together all the experts, um, networking with him, writing the books, uh, you know, working with the podcast to, to bring that information forward. Um, you're creating your own impact in that way. And I think you know, some of us is like me, I can't go produce clean water in Africa for somebody, but I know the people who can, and I can connect them <laughs> and I can network with them and make sure that it gets where it needs to, to be. And I can create the visibility for them. So other people get to see it. Um, let's talk about those experts that you bring forward and all the conversations that you've had use, you know, probably through writing your books and, and doing the podcast and all the conversations that you've had networking, just, just regular conversations you've had. What other than the you're hearing about the the emissions problems and, and what to do to save the planet, what I want to go both 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 angles on this. What are the, the biggest problems, specific problems that you're seeing, whether they whether that be across the world or in your own backyard? And what are the wins that you're seeing that just mind that were mind blowing to you? Somebody, you know, where somebody, some farmer out in the middle of, you know, wherever it is in, you know, in Africa has said, this is what I'm doing and didn't realize it was an, oh my gosh, moment for, <laughs> for other people. Something simple that we, you know, somebody who said this yesterday in an interview I was doing, it was a pet rock moment. <laughs> it was one of those products or services that you go, duh, 
you know, why, why haven't we thought of this before now? Are you having those conversations? Are you having those moments where you're, you're hearing from no. people that are, it's not terribly technical? The surprising thing, thing I, I found out, um, I, I've done some training and I, I'm, I'm finding this out on a regular basis. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not the building that has the issue. It's not the, the technology that's in the building. Uh, we don't need to spend thousands of pounds on putting solar on the roof and and uh, changing all our lights. We don't need to do that. It's the people, and that that isn't really been too <laughs> much. The, yeah, it's the mindset. <laughs> it's the approach of of organisations. And I've, I wrote an article recently. It's, it's off the back of James Clear's um, book Atomic Habits regarding the one percent change. And making a 1% change can make a remarkable difference. Now, I've played on that because, I, you know, when you look at, you know, I've been through lockdown and I'm not, I've, they've only just opened the gym. So that's my excuse. Okay. So I need to get back in the gym. I've, I love the gym and I haven't been in the gym. So but if I start going back to, I'm not going to be able to go back in the gym every other day like I was going but if I just go once a week to start with and just get myself back into things, I'm going to get myself back the habit's going to start coming. So if an organization was to save that 1% of energy yeah. now, and I know I've got experience in this where I've, I've identified somewhere where we could make a difference and make that 1% change, the facilities manager said, no, 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 I'm, going to, I'm never going to turn it on. And that's going to make a bigger change. So the 1% changes can make remarkable differences. It's a, it gets in your head. Yeah. Exactly. And my biggest shock that I'm finding is that the problems that I've had in the UK are exactly the same as the problems that we're mm. having across the world. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I didn't think I could take my story across the world. I thought I'm in this little, you know, I live in Essex, I live near London. <laughs> London's different. The UK is different. You know, you like this, but it isn't. It's, mm -mm. it's been amazing. You know, 2020, you know, sadly it was a sad year for everyone, but it's been an amazing year for the um, sort of opening up and, and bringing people together with knowledge. It really has. Uh, I think everybody has become used to meeting each other and seeing each other online. So it's opened up doors where it wouldn't have been open before because some people who were opposed to doing something like this had no choice. And of course, education, my goodness, if, if not for this, I don't know what we would be doing. We'd be so backwards now, it would be crazy. Um, you know, you I like in what. Go ahead. The funny thing I had today, um, I had a phone call. I actually sat on the phone for half an hour <laughs> with a meeting. I had, when, how bizarre is that? I had a phone call today. I, I didn't have a Zoom What I hate, call. though, is three-hour summits when I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to put, you know, a, a picture of me up here while I go to the bathroom, get lunch, and you know, <laughs> whatever, you know. It's exactly. like, let's not exactly. do that to me again. I can't stand it. Um, I like in what, you, what you're talking about here to recycling. It's, it's that 1% difference that you were talking about. If you just learn how to, you know, not throw the, the plastic in the trash, but put it in the recycle bin or, you know, wash out your, your water bottle, you know, your water container instead of going out, out and always buying, you know, plastic uh, water bottles. It's those little bitty things that you're talking about that make such a difference. But um, is there a big win that you've come across that you just, you know, you know, wow, I've got to, I've got to shout this from the rooftops. Is there somebody or some country or some entity, some corporation that you feel like is really doing it right or has, has figured out something that maybe a lot of people haven't figured out yet? Um, not that I've found as yet. There's nothing really new that I've come across. And I'm sorry to disappoint the no, answer. That's right. I didn't know if you come really... across some kind of technological wonder or even something simple where somebody has figured out um, how to save their corporation or their organization or community um, some, you know, some level of pain with this subject. So I just thought I'd reach out and see. No, there's nothing. It, it's, it's been the reverse. That everyone's doing the same thing, which is mm -hmm. really good. Um, I, I think I'm giving more, you know, when I'm talking to people, they're finding... I'm, I'm the one. With You're the, the one giving the ideas. <laughs> not, not the one giving the ideas, but I'm the one sort of advising them that it's, it's the people that's given us the, you know, if we was to focus on the best practices. Uh, and I think that's, it's been coming that way and everyone's been trying to, 
to do the technology side yeah. um, rather than that. So from a standpoint of say uh, third world countries that lack even the simplest, most basic, uh, so they're trying to get to square one. We're trying to save <laughs> some of what we do have and, and save the planet at the same time. And they're just trying to get to a place where they have enough. Um, do you do you hear from them? Are you hearing from experts around the world in places like that? Are you talking to, to folks like that? To, yeah, so I, I am doing a lot of work in Kenya um, and the Philippines. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing that does, okay, let's go back to the question before, but maybe the the biggest thing that I'm finding is that there's a lot of PhDs out there. There's yeah. a lot of intelligence. And, you know, in Kenya and in uh, sort of the Philippines as such, there's a lot of people gone to university and got educated mm -hmm. to do this. In the UK, I'm, I'm not, I haven't got a PhD. I haven't got a degree in it. I've only got a degree in life, you know. I haven't got the degree in what I'm doing. Um, I'm a chartered energy manager, but that's my my title as such of the, the accreditation I've got within my industry but I've had to work at that 40 years of experience has given me that not not a, a study yeah. inside <laughs> That's so, right. yeah so there's a, there's a lot of um, students out there that are coming through I'm, I'm contacted on a regular basis which is quite refreshing to know that we've got a, it's not just the I call us the elders the energy managers there's, there's a lot of people with grey hair especially in the UK that do energy management. I sit on a, a board where we have regular meetings and all of us have got gray hair and we're all guys. But what I'm seeing is there's a lot of students coming through, a lot of females that are mixed, very mixed now. And, and that's really refreshing to see. Um, and some of them have got PhDs and I speak to many, many people with PhDs and I'm thinking, wow, I'm talking, I'm training someone who's got a PhD in what we're doing, which is really yeah. exciting. That's fantastic. Uh, I think that can only help these countries that are, are struggling with with how to produce something that they don't they don't have or they have very little, you know, to work with in that regard. So that's fantastic. So from the standpoint of your network of of people, are you are you moving forward with uh, doing something new in the future? Are you are you planning some kind of a an event or tell us how one gets involved with the network and where it might go from here? So I'm heavily involved with a group called the Clean Energy Revolution. There's about 120 of us that all use WhatsApp and we share our knowledge on LinkedIn. Uh -huh. So that's one team that I'm a part of with the network inside. Um, yeah. that's a, I work very closely with Brian Scott in, in Canada and we're, we're there educating and bringing the knowledge together. And it's a three-pronged approach regarding energy management, energy supply, and in the environmental side. Myself, I'm building a platform um, on my website now that people can, so energy experts can come to us and they can um, share their knowledge as well in their insights. So by coming onto our platform, you can put your own case studies, your own insights oh, nice. in there. Nice. So you can yeah. grow the knowledge base and, you know, um, I want to bring all these energy experts together and sharing that knowledge. I try to do the sums. I think I need about 250,000 energy experts because it's my vision. And this is your vision. We smile about this to have their hand holding hands around the world sharing knowledge. And yeah. the only way we can do this is by, you know, the internet and like LinkedIn and yeah. just bringing all those people together. Fantastic. Well, we will keep aware of your platform as growing. You make sure you keep us on the uh, the mailing list there. I can add one or two to your list, <laughs> your growing okay, list. You. Uh, that would be, you know, interesting to have. And he's somebody who speaks regularly and he does mobile power grids. He's somebody I've been working with for a number of years. Um, and then there's also those smart city people that uh, the experts that I have talked to over the years. And I know that energy is such a part of the conversations they're having around the world. So definitely can bring some of those uh, folks to the table. Um, fantastic. So uh, how can one get your book? Books with an S. <laughs> it's available through my website um, or you can go on to Amazon. But if, uh, okay, the it's available on Amazon. Amazon. Okay. However, book two, if you are an energy expert, go on to my scorecard and do the scorecard and you'll get this sent to you electronically free. 
Fantastic. So this is free. We're offering this free basically this book. Okay, and that's on your website. And we're going to drop the, your website link in. If you're seeing this on YouTube, everybody, we're going to have that in the description. If you're seeing this on frontrunnersinnovate.com, it'll also be the link will also be in uh, the descriptive part, the contact part below. Or if, so, you, if you're not if you're not an energy expert, please just contact me. I'll send you a free copy of that book. Right. I mean, I could see that there could be some organizations and corporations even that, that might have interest in connecting and getting a copy of the book. So fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Paul. This is great. You're thank such you. a good resource for people. This is awesome. I mean, it's, and I love what you said. It's not all the fandangles that are out there that are going to create the change. It's that 1% change, that mindset shift. It's the people. It is the people that's going to make these changes so and i think that probably is across the board with just about everything that's major in life you've got to get that mindset shift and then you've got it going from there so thank you so much i appreciate thank it. you awesome. really appreciate the time Look, yeah. you need to come onto my podcast you know that don't you now i would love to i'd love to bring some of the you know the inner workings here of the people that i've you know been interviewing um over the past period of time so i think we can swap some guests too so you were talking yeah. to me earlier about some some that you have i think i'd also like to to meet with them and i'll i'll, I'll pull a few your your direction all right Brilliant. thank you sounds perfect thank you so much take care all right you too